Hello, Brother Monroe here with uh, something a bit different. A first look at a game that uh, a lot of people ask me, am I going to play it? Are you going to take a look at it? And my answer has always been yes. And I was very lucky to be contacted and offered a press release copy of Rule the Waves 3. So um, you may be asking yourself, hey, how can I get this? How can I get this? Uh, I will include a link to the Steam page for the game and you can wishlist it and when it is released you will be able to i think it I think it'll be up for pre-orders by the time the video goes up uh, but if not you can wishlist it and keep an eye on it uh, it will be releasing very soon um now if you haven't come across rule the waves um rule the waves 3 is i believe essentially a, an updated version of rule the waves 2 a very venerable game um and you have four start dates to pick from, 1890, 1900, 1920, 1935. And if you are a player of Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts, you will recognize a lot of the kind of uh, DNA <laughs> of this game. And the sort of things that you can maybe do. It's a grand campaign and it runs uh, quite a long way. <laughs> As you can see on the right here, we're including things like missiles and aircraft carriers and all sorts of fun things like that um obviously uh, the release version might look slightly different but if you're expecting 3d gameplay uh modern ui modern graphics uh the answer <laughs> you, you you will be mistaken um so you have some options when you're when you're uh, starting up the game. I'm just going to leave everything on on kind of standard um, and launch into the game, and you can see kind of what I mean. It's a bit like playing a game in the control panel or Windows 3.1. <laughs> There's you really are looking at spreadsheet, literally spreadsheets. Uh, there is a map. Uh, which, by the way, uh, and if it will let me, oh, I keep keep forgetting it's right click to scroll around on the map. Oh, look at that! It wraps around. Anyway, um, <laughs> petty grievances aside, uh, so the way the map works is it's kind of cool. Uh, you have these kind of strategic areas. These are the boxes, and you move your ships between between these strategic zones and then they just kind of generate missions from within that zone it doesn't actually um kind of matter so if you go to the mediterranean here we just click on the mediterranean it will tell us everything that we need to know about the med uh that we need at least twenty nine thousand tons here as britain and we have 31 well 32 cool uh and we're Fulfilling that with three heavy cruisers and a light cruiser. France has 120 ships of all classes. Italy, we can see who has what and what is in here. Uh, similarly, we could do the same for Northern Europe. Um, that'll give us the same kind of breakdown. And I mean, that there's a lot to this game. There's a lot, and I'm not going to go and try and do a tutorial for it because I've only been just kind of tinkering and playing around with it um, myself. Uh, I, I have not played Rule the Waves 2 a lot. I have seen people playing it, uh, so I'm no expert. I will leave that to people who are far more qualified. Um, I see we've actually got a little exclamation mark on the Southern African Theatre. Why is that? Ah, oh, we don't have enough tonnage here. Uh, so we could move move a ship. Uh, we could move, I don't know, a few destroyers, these ones. And we want to send them to Southern Africa. Boom. And then they, they will go and they will go and do that. Um, 
<laughs> what else to show off? Uh, down here, you've got your uh, your kind of your budget. As you can see, we're currently losing money. And in fact, it's a little bit off. There we go. Uh, does that help? Yeah, it helps a little bit. Um, the money is not given a unit. It's just monies. And here you can kind of access various buttons to access various things. And then you've got your tabs up here, which access more things. Uh, this is the diplomacy. So this is tension. Uh, more tension is bad. Well, or good, depending on point of view. You can launch intelligence. You can say, well, we want to find out what the Germans are up to. Um, but this does cost money. And uh, you can see it adding cost here. Uh, but you could just say, oh, I want some intelligence on everybody, for instance. I just want to know what's going on. Uh, and you'll get reports and you'll find out about designs, uh, numbers, uh, where they're, where ships are located, stuff like that. It's all very, very helpful. Uh, you then have your ships in service. Uh, the game will automatically generate a fleet for you. Um, so, for instance, we have the Repulse class, the Empress of India class, the Collingwood class, and the Royal Sovereign class battleships. And if you right-click on them and view data, you can see what they look like. So we've got a, uh, let's tell the guns. Twelve inch. No, that's armor. Don't tell me the guns. Ah, I know, rather than the picture, let's go uh, open design. There we go. So this is the full uh, details of the design. And this is what the designer looks like as well, by the way. Um, so we are running 14-inch guns in a... Uh, oh, yeah, it's a Q. So A, B, Q, X, Y. We have a whole bunch of casement 6-inch guns. Uh, some light AA guns, some medium AA guns some four inch guns, which is kind of stuck on. Uh, rocking an 11 and a half inch belt using a slope deck. Uh, so not too bad, a bit of a, it's a kind of a super dreadnought, I would say. Um, let's have a look at the Collingwood. So another A, B, Q, X, Y. 14 inch very similar ship uh what's the speed on this one 21 and the royal sovereigns also 21 so very similar ships uh what about this empress of india class ah a bit different <laughs> a b x y 16 inch still 21 knots bit more armor bigger thirty-one thousand tons Six so inch casements, more AA guns. Very nice. And the repulse. I'm just curious. Ooh, completely different. AQQX. Interesting. Six, uh, 13 inch, 9 inch. Ugh, these are horrible. <laughs> these are dreadful anyway um you can also look at say a destroyer uh, and have a look at that we've got additional armament for the torpedoes uh, mines radar planes not that you can fit planes on a destroyer but we do have i'm pretty sure yeah here we go a carrier the argus uh, 30 knots, um, they carry some guns. Uh, notice as well, you can make them dual purpose guns. You can also do this for your secondary guns. So you can shoot uh, aircraft, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it does have a flight deck with 48 planes on board. No armor, uh, you can fit flight and hangar deck armor, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Cool stuff, cool stuff, and <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a spreadsheet central. <laughs> we have um, 
some ships under construction, another carrier, and a light carrier. Interesting. The Biter. Um, we have access to submarines, and you can't name... You can't... Ed, uh, like, name. You can't edit submarines, as far as I can tell. Uh, you can just build, build them. So if you go build sub, it's like, what kind of sub do you want? Um, and, that, and that's kind of it. Uh, you can build coastal fortifications if you want. Uh, you can see any ships that you scrapped. Uh, you've got an area overview, so you can go, right, well, is there anywhere... You can compare these two numbers. Is there anywhere I'm under? Again, it's that's highlighted on the map, but you can, you can kind of see what's going on. How many submarines you have, how many mine layers, uh, mine sweepers... Uh, trade protection ships, and so on. You can see all of your bases, again, in a big old spreadsheet. And you also have your officers, who are all named, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can uh, promote them, and you can kind of assign them to ships, and things like that, which is all pretty cool. Uh, I've only just started delving into this, but the main thing I've looked at is the design, because the design is really fun. Um... I will admit I have zero artistic talent, so uh, the superstructure <laughs> is entirely uh, cosmetic. So you can just shove turrets on a ship, and away you go with nothing. You don't need to put funnels, superstructure, or anything like that on. It just they just look bad. Um, similarly, uh, where you put the turrets. Uh, it does not affect the armor weight. Uh, let's let's try and show that off. Actually, let's add a turret at A and a turret at uh, Y. So right at the far ends of the ship. And if we put some level of belt armor on, uh, you can see that the weight of the armor. Belt is 4,225. And if we move them, I think is here. Resize gun positions. And we can move them right next to each other. It doesn't make any difference. So all of this is aesthetic. Is aesthetic. Uh, and because of that, <laughs> what I would tend to do is go right put in a target displacement and i'll let the computer kind of design a ship for me uh and do that a few times until i get something that i like the look of or i'm prepared to fiddle around with uh, it's just built a kind of nelsonic type ship which is kind of cool a uh, 16 inch guard in fact a very nelsonic ship but then you can get into actually changing it. You can change the freeboard. You can make it a low freeboard ship. If you're uh, wanting to go for that, you can adjust your speed, your operational range, uh, the type of engines. So at the moment we have uh, diesels, gas turbines, coal turbines, uh, coal tubes, and uh, oil turbines. Unit machinery is kind of cool. That I think what that does is it compartmentalizes everything so it's all individual you can change your belt um, you can include a magazine box if you wish um, you can narrow the belt you can incline it you can fiddle with your extended armor turret armor armor scheme depending on what you what you like. There is a manual explaining all of this, by the way, in game. Um, you can change your torp torpedo defense level. I think the maximum I've got is three at the moment. Uh, crew accommodation. That's a cool one. You can mark them as colonial service. It's the same thing. Uh, they cost a little bit more, but they increase the displacement they count for. Uh, you can change your guns. Uh, you can. Um, change their fire director, so we've already got the advanced director. Number of fire control positions. The turret 
era. So you can go, oh, actually, I want late Dreadnought ones, Dreadnought ones. This just changes the, the look of them. A confuse their turret arc. So where the guns are placed does matter. So we could go, oh, uh, forward center line. Uh, so you can move it around on the hull, but that isn't a huge thing. But you can go, actually, I don't want that turret. We'll keep B, but we'll have a Y turret, an aft turret. Oops. Triple, triple turret. Stick it on the back, you, so you can do that. Uh, and then you could try and move the <laughs> move the superstructure. Though it's it's like it is difficult to do. So you could just go. No, I don't like that layout. Let's go for this one. Oh, right. A B X Y. Uh, what kind of guns are those? Sixteens, triples. Damn, that's a that's a lot. Um, uh, actually. I want them to be jewels and late dreadnought style. There we go. And and then you can keep going. And you can see down here you have your your weight budget or your displacement budget. So we've got another. We've got four thousand tons back from doing that. And it tells you your cost and how long it takes to build it and stuff like that, which is all very cool. We've got our dual purpose secondary, so quite a lot of them, which is fantastic. We even have some tertiary guns, which, well, you know, probably not very useful. So we could take those off uh, and we could fit more. More AA guns instead, for instance. Um, you could fit torpedoes if you wanted. <laughs> uh, this, in fact, does have a seaplane hangar. Cool. Or helicopters. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, we've got a we've got a Q catapult for a scout plane. Uh, a missile <laughs> missile launchers don't have any any missiles at the moment. Um, but now that we freed up the weight, we can go back and go. Well, uh, we're already on all or nothing belt. Can we push that all the way up to a sixteen inch belt? Uh, we could get splinter protection. Or else that deck arm was a little bit low. Push that all the way up to eight. Nope, too much. Six, uh, close. Five and a half. And, and you can you can fiddle with all this to your heart's content and build some really cool ships, which is actually just fun in and of itself to do paper kind of kind of ship design um and that's you know pr pretty much what you're doing you can also uh build and research your aircraft there is a research tree which is also very cool you're just gonna have your research going and it just goes through levels but naval guns are Particularly, you can change the priorities on these as well. So you can go, well, uh, I want 16-inch gun. Uh, go back to this if you want. That's high priority, getting those, the, getting more guns. Um, or actually, I really want more levels in fire control. Uh, or you can go, well, fleet tactics. That's not important to me, which is kind of cool. Um, you can adjust your total research budget. You can be like, I want to spend all the money or I want to spend <laughs> nothing and <laughs> no research at all, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can do a division designer, set up your fleets with admirals and stuff like that. You can do fleet exercises once a year. Uh, and this, and I'm just very quickly going to do this uh, just to show off kind of what it looks like. Uh, 
Um, we'll just get some battleships to throw down. And this... will uh, show you kind of what the, the battle stuff is like. Which, again, I really... I really am not particularly au okay with. Um, I just can put it on view to control. So you've got a running log here. And you can see that they're just starting to blast the hell out of each other. But again, imagination quiet. Turn the noises off, by the way. But Bembo doesn't look like she's having a good time. Like uh, Empress of Indian and Rodney are withdrawing. Probably going to end soon. Yeah, it's like it's uh, over to me. Night coming. Just sailing in a circle. How weird behaviour, but okay. There we go. So let's have a look uh, at what happened. So uh, light damage to two of the battleships, but we, they they were two sunk. Uh, to one sunk on the other side. So victory to Team B. Uh, let's have a look at exactly what happened. Um, so the Anson was sunk, the Repulse was sunk, and the Benbow was sunk. And then there was medium damage to these. So Anson, Repulse, and Benbow, worth looking at their designs, basically. Um, you can do it with aircraft and all sorts, um, which I think is kind of cool. And then just close that. So this was the Collingwood's Anson. But uh, yeah, Repulse and Bembo, which is exactly what I said, that I think they might have uh, have some trouble, uh, those Repulse class ships, because yeah, small guns, rubbish belt, 
So you could look at, at these for pot potentially scrapping. Uh, you can refit ships, by the way. That's what this uh, this thing is, the open design for rebuild. Um, you can mothball them. You can put them on the reserve fleet or the active fleet. Um, and kind of adjust what you, what you want to do. And uh, otherwise, uh, in case you were wondering, the game is turn-based. So you can hit end turn. Uh, yep. And you get these kind of... Um, options. Uh, no, we're going to keep our super secret amphibious tractors to ourselves. Uh, <laughs> this one. It doesn't actually tell you what it does, but you can kind of watch what happens over here. Um, so, interesting. So, the crew quality is suffering of cramped accommodation whilst abroad um navy elite so we want to build more things and it tells you what what has been kind of going on ah, we've got good aircraft it would seem awesome and then you do whatever you want on the next turn i think a turn is a month just like a dreadnoughts um and well i mean that's that's it for a first look. Uh, there's a huge amount to deal, delve into, which I have not gotten to. Um, I've only been poking around a little bit. But the designer seems really cool. Being able to use submarines and stuff, and uh, aircraft, and missiles, and the kind of technology of later then second world war era stuff really cool um i'm looking forward to trying the game out more uh if you want to see me do a regular series of it uh a rule of ways three let me know down in the comments what kind of country era do you want to see it at all let me know um try and figure the game out obviously it's not much to uh <laughs> it, like graphically it is uh, definitely a step back in time, but yeah, let me know what you think, and uh, if you're excited to see more of this game. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.